All right, so we've got our Dragon's Breath finish set up here. Uh, what we're doing is heat anodizing our flame piles. I'm going to show you a little bit how we do that today. All right, so we start off with our titanium dice. We've got ready to flame polish. Uh, these things are stupid amounts of clean. All right, um, they have to be because any impurities on the surface will uh, uh, scorch the dice instead of actually uh, growing that crystal oxide layer that we're looking for. All right, um, start out, well, our dice are sitting on a graphite block. This graphite block has a very low specific heat. Um, so it won't, it, it resists the transfer of heat. So we don't have to heat this up when we're heating the dice up. Uh, if we had like a metal plate here, uh, which we used to use, uh, we had to heat the plate up in order to heat the dice up. Otherwise it'd act like a gigantic heat sink. So we've got a graphite block sitting here, uh, which allows us just to put heat just into the dice. That sits elevated on a pair of uh, metal uh, 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 blocks so that we get an air gap all the way around it uh, to help insulate. Then. Below that, this all sits on a, uh, uh, a big soapstone block, which we use as a gigantic heat sink. This absorbs any of the excess heat that goes bit, bit, bit from our torch so that we don't scorch the table. And it just can't, the, the, the block stays at a nice low, you know, 120 degrees or so. It's not hot enough to burn anything. Um, now, with, with that setup, we use our torch uh, to actually uh, control heat on the dice. And I'll show you guys how we do that now. All right, so we just start. Slowly building the heat up in the dice. It takes a while to get titanium hot. Titanium doesn't have a very high specific heat, um, so it doesn't take. It, it takes a while to, to absorb the heat you're putting into it. Once it starts to absorb the heat, the colors come on pretty quickly, though. Um, what we're doing uh, by our heat anodizing uh, is is growing a thin uh, crystalline oxide layer uh, on the, as the first surface of the material. And as you can see, we start to heat this up. We start to get more uh, our color start to come on. We start out with a nice bronze uh, straw color and then we go to a purple to a royal blue to a uh, bright ice blue that you see there. Uh, and if we get it really really hot we can even get a green but um, that color is exceedingly hard to maintain because it's a very narrow uh, temperature range so we don't do that one very often. Um, but and the, so what we're using is a, is a process called thin film interference. Uh, basically it's the same thing that makes gives soap bubbles their rainbow colors. Um, but instead of being a soap bubble, what we're doing is uh, growing that thin crystalline oxide layer. And depending on how thick that oxide layer grows, all right, is the different colors that we get. All right. So basically the light rays come in, hit the surface of the layer, and part, and part of them bounce off. Then the rest of the light waves come in and hit the metal and then they bounce off. The difference between those two points of where they reflect gives us our, gives us our interference. All right, depending on what, how thick that layer is, is what band of light is canceled out. So when we get to blue, that means all colors have been canceled out except blue. With, uh, you know, and then you got your purples and your bronzes and stuff as well. So. Pretty cool process. Uh, this is what you're seeing here is, uh, is the end result of the culmination of many, many steps to get to here. Uh, they have to be highly polished uh, to start out with. Then they have to be clean, like super, super clean. So we use an ultrasonic cleaner uh, with a uh, strong solvent uh, to make sure that there's no impurities on the surface of the dice. Uh, so that we get a nice finish on them. Any impurities, will lead to the, the you know big soot marks and stuff on the dice.